In this series, I'll be demonstrating every default keyboard shortcut combination in Adobe Premiere Pro. That means showing you what every key does, as well as what actions you can accomplish by adding any modifiers to it. In this specific video, we'll be looking at the key section of Q, W, E, R, T, and Y. To help me out with a tutorial like this, I'm gonna be using Premiere Gal's brand new custom made Premiere Pro keyboard by Editor Keys. This thing's awesome because it has all of the icons mapped to the keyboard for your keyboard shortcuts. If you wanna learn more about it, I have a link to it in the description. Let's kick things off by looking at the top three keys of Q, W, and E. If you take a closer look, you can see the words written previous edit, next edit, and extend edit to playhead. That's because these three keys have to do with trimming and extending the edit point to your playhead. We'll start with Q. This is the playhead, and this is the previous edit point. If I just hit Q without any modifier, it will ripple trim from the playhead head to the previous edit point. Let me show you that again. I'll move my playhead right here. It's going to ripple trim this section and shuffle the rest of the clips over. Let's add some modifiers. If I hold option and hit Q, this is no longer a ripple trim, but just a normal trim. It leaves a gap right there. So with W, instead of looking at the previous edit point, now we're looking at the next edit point. So if I hit W, it ripple trims to next edit point and shuffles the clips over. And if I hold option and hit W, it creates a normal trim, leaving a gap right there to the next edit point. You can also extend the edit point to your playhead by using the modifier shift. So if I hold shift and hit Q, that was the previous edit point extending to my playhead. Again, I'll show you, hold shift, hit Q, previous edit point to playhead. The reverse of that would be next edit point. So hold shift and hit W, the next edit point comes in. Another way to do this is with the key E to extend edit to playhead. If I click on the end of a clip, you get a little red bar like that. And once I hit E, it will extend that edit point. Let me undo this. I'll click this edit point, hit E, and it will extend. Since we're still on Q and W, let me mention that if you hold Command on Mac or Control on Windows and hit Q, that will quit Premiere Pro. We don't want to do that. And this is similar to most programs. If you hold command and hit W, it's going to close out whatever you have highlighted. So this is the sequence bin. It closes out that bin. Let's see what else you can do with the key E. If I hit shift and E, this brings up my export frame menu. Right here is the name of the sequence, what the time code is at which you are pulling that still from. And this is the number of the still that I've exported from this project. Here's the format that you export to. You can choose the path and you can import it into the project from there. I'll hit okay. And there is my still image right here. If you highlight any clip and hit command E, this is editing the original. So it brings it up in my preview. Notice I did it over here in the project bin, but here I have this clip, highlight this, hit command E. This brings up that also in QuickTime on a Mac. If you hit shift command and E, that will unenable and enable your clip. And finally, if you do Command, Option, and E, it will create an ellipse on your program monitor. Moving on to R, you can see that this brings up the Rate Stretch tool. This allows you to speed up your footage or slow down your footage just by clicking and dragging with this tool. Also having to do with speed, you can hit Command R, and this brings up the Clip and Speed Duration window. You can change the percentage of the speed here, the duration, you can reverse it. If I make my clip faster, let's say we want to go 200% with ripple edit shift trailing clips on, it will ripple edit and shift the trailing clips. Let me undo that. And if I turn this off, go up to 200%, hit OK, notice that it does not shift the trailing clips. One other thing in this window is the time interpolation. Time interpolation is the way that Premiere is going to interpret the footage if you were to stretch something out beyond the frames that you have available. It's either going to use frame sampling, which is just duplicating the frames in between each frames that you do have available. With frame blending, just imagine Premiere Pro adding crossfades in between each frame to fill those gaps. And then with optical flow, Premiere Pro is going to artificially create new frames where they're needed. To clarify, if you hit Command R while you have a clip highlighted on the timeline, it will bring up speed duration. But if you highlight your program monitor and hit Command R, this will bring up your rulers. And this allows you to drag on any guides that you want. And if you want to lock your guides once you have them in place, you can hold all of the modifiers of Shift, Option, Command, and R, and that will lock your guides. Notice how I can't click and move them. 
Again, I'll hit Shift, Option, Command, R, and now I have the opportunity to move my guides. Similar to the action when we create an ellipse, if you hit Option, Command, R instead of Option, Command, E, we now create a rectangle instead of an ellipse. Let me bring up the type tool and just type something like hit that like button. If I highlight these words and hit shift command R, it will right align the text. And if you wanna go back to left align, you can probably guess it, it's shift command L to go to left align text. And the last thing you can do by default with R is reverse match frame. Imagine you are looking at your source monitor and you find a sound bite or some other spot that you like the clip and you want to find out where it's at in your sequence. Well, this is where you can just hit Shift R and it will take the playhead directly to that spot in your timeline. Let's move on to the key T. Hitting it by itself, it brings up the type tool. So I can type any title I want to in there. If you're lazy, you could just hit Command T and that will create a new text layer for you. If you do a lot of audio mixing inside Premiere Pro, Shift 6 will bring up my audio mixer. And another thing you can do with T is show and hide tracks. That's done by highlighting your audio mixer and hitting Option Command T. So I could hide my VO track. You can see it has my audio chain right there. So if I uncheck this, hit OK. The track's still down here on the timeline. It just hides it here. If I want to bring that back, I'll hit Option Command T again and bring it back. Another big thing this key does is trimming. If I were to highlight a clip and hit Shift T, this would bring up my trim edit window. This is the same as if I were to go in between these two clips and double click, and that brings up the trim edit window right there. You can manipulate the out point and in point of the next clip. So this is the very last frame of this iris clip and the very first frame of this violet clip. If I want to change the edit point of this, I can do it by one frame, see the edit point moving, or I could do it by 10 frames. You could also sit here and click and drag to roll edit between the two clips. Premiere also gives you an option here to toggle your trim type. On Windows, it's Shift T, and on Mac, it's Control T. Let me make this just a little bit bigger. I'm gonna hold Control and hit T, and notice what happened to the bracket. Now it's yellow, and we're using the Ripple Edit tool. So if I go trim backwards by one, notice that it's ripple trimming and moving the clips over. This is different than when I was doing the rolling trim. If I hit Control T again, now I'm ripple trimming with the violet clip as I move. If I hit Control T again, we're going to do a normal trim. Hit Control T again, and now it's highlighting this clip and creating a gap when I create those edits. And one last time, if I hit Control T, that brings us back to the rolling edit tool. And if I hit plus or minus, that edit point stays in between the two clips. It just moves where it is. There is a lot going on there with the T key and all of the different actions you can do with trimming. Let's move on to a key that has far less things assigned to it. Why? And in fact, there's only one thing you can do with that. That's bring up the slip tool. What the slip tool will do is highlight a clip. So here I have that violet clip highlighted. I can move the in and out point of the clip without affecting the iris and tan clip on either side of this. I could also highlight all of these, hit Y to bring up the slip tool. And now I'm moving the violet clip in between the two while maintaining the in and out point of the iris and tan clip. Another way that you could utilize this, I'll hit V to bring up my selection tool, is highlight two clips, hit Y, and now this is kind of like the rolling edit tool. That concludes this section of the keyboard that I'm gonna be talking about in this video. When I upload more videos in this series, you'll find them right here. Or if you wanna check out a video that was algorithmically chosen for you by the robots that are taking our jobs at YouTube, it's right there. If you wanna check out Premiere Gal's amazing keyboard, I'll have links in the description below. And until next time, my name's Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.